Hey guys, it's that Dividend Guy coming at you with a different kind of video. I've been looking at a lot of ETFs lately, and I know that's a pretty popular way to invest. So I wanted to go through and kind of tell you exactly how much you'd have to have invested um, as an average, say an average earning American, um, <clears throat> to live off um, one of the most popular ETFs here on YouTube, which is SCHD. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over the holdings in the ETF so you know exactly um, what you're buying. So I'm going to go over the most popular, I think it's like 10 or 8 or 10 um, positions. Then I'm going to go over the dividend that it pays, its payout ratio. And then we're going to go and figure out how much you need invested to live off of this ETF. So first off, <clears throat> let's look at the holdings. So first of all, sectors, we've got industrials being the biggest allocated sector right around 18%. Then we've got healthcare at 16%, financial services, which banks are getting slammed right now. So I'm sure, you know, th that might be going down overall, but that's about 14 and a half, almost 15%. Consumer defensive is sitting at 13 and a half percent. Technology is about 12 and a half. Consumer cyclical is about 9.4%. Energy sitting right around 9%. Communication services is near 5%. Basic materials is 2% of this ETF, and then utilities is 0.3%. So very little um, utility exposure here in this ETF. But let's take a look at the positions real quick. So top 10 holdings. So overall, these positions um, represent about four, right around 41% of the ETF. So right now, um, it's, of course, a large value cap. Sorry, I uh, had somebody text me. This is a large um, value category. So they have large stocks, but they're looking at value plays as in their stocks that are maybe undervalued currently. Um, and it's been um, it's been an ETF or it's been around since October 20th, 2011. But it does have over 100 holdings. So um, keep in mind, this is top 10. So this is less than 50% of the holdings, um, which honestly, um, that's a pretty good diversification percentage. Uh, you don't really want to see the top 10 be more than like 50 or 60%. So being 40 is still, I, I think, even over allocated a little bit for an ETF. But I think uh, VTI and VU are even like more when it comes to the top 10. So obvious 4.2%. This is my personal biggest position um, and best investment over the past like four years, three, four years that I've been investing. Avi by far has been my best performer. Next, Cisco Systems, one that I personally have never really looked into. I know some legacy um, investors, people have been at it for quite a while, own, own Cisco. I know of the company. I just haven't done any deep dives on it. PepsiCo, <clears throat> one of my favorite companies. I eat their products or drink their product. Well, mostly eat because I'm a Pep I'm a, I'm a Coca-Cola guy, but I do love Doritos. Um, so Pepsi, I'm one of the biggest food and beverage makers in America, pretty much on the planet. Um, 4.1% of the, of the ETF is in PepsiCo. Then we have UPS at 4%. So <clears throat> if you've seen the, uh, the, uh, gold logo with the package, with packages walking up to your door, they are one of the biggest, um, kind of logistics companies they, them and FedEx are huge as well as Amazon now too. Um, but then, of course, we have Pfizer, a little bit more than 4%. They had one of the very successful pepperoni shots, but they also have, I believe, ibuprofen and Tylenol. They have, they have so many products. Um, it's kind of insane in that category. Then Texas Instruments, um, you know them probably for their, their calculators. I know everybody kind of, when, when you got up to a certain level of math, um, which is for super smart people, um, they... They're known for their calculators, but they do a lot more. So I have I've done a little bit of a deep dive on Texas Instruments, and they're really solid. Like they have double digit growth rates. They have great earnings every single quarter. So they're very consistent. So great company to own, but great that it's got allocation here in the, in this ETF. Then we've got Broadcom, which is again one of the most popular companies, kind of like Texas Instruments, kind of kind of grown over over the years. Seeing that a lot more in people's portfolios, and for good reason. 
double digit dividend growth rate, huge earnings per share month or like year after year, quarter after quarter. So they are a huge dividend growth company. Then you have Verizon. Again, one of these kind of legacy companies, telecom is huge. Um, everybody needs it, but you know, it's not one of the, it's, it's very capital intensive. So it's kind of hard to make money in this sector. Um, they have very steady cash flows, just like AT&T, minus all the headache with that Time Warner spinoff. Um, they've done very well with capital allocation. It's just not a sector that I like personally, just because of the fact that it's very, very capital intensive. Next, we've got my personal favorite company, Coca-Cola. Um, they are the biggest beverage maker in the United States, I think in the world too, but they are just mass love Coca-Cola drinking one right now actually then we got home depot so they are a home biggest home improvement they are the biggest home improvement company in the u.s um <clears throat> massive them and lowe's kind of own this sector but home depot has grown the dividend at double digit rates so very very well um managed with with their capital earnings per shares great year over year so they uh are great dividend growers. So out of the three, the best dividend grow, well, I guess four, uh, four out of 10 are massive dividend growers. Abby's a double digit, Texas Instruments is double digits, Broadcom's double digits, and Home Depot is double digits. So then you have the <clears throat> legacy businesses with decent yields, Cisco Systems, UPS, and Verizon all have pretty high yields right now. And then of course you have the consistency with PepsiCo being a dividend king, and Coca-Cola. So you kind of have a mixture of everything here. You get that double-digit growth <clears throat> with consistent earnings. You have the legacy businesses that pay out well enough that, you know, if you owned them, you're getting a really decent yield on your money. And then you have the, you know, consistency. Uh, Pfizer is also like, Pe like Abby, PepsiCo, Pfizer, Home Depot. They're all pretty consistent with their dividend growth as well. So great, you know, a great basket of companies, ones that, you know, you could own individually, but if you don't want any of that exposure to individual stocks, this might be a great ETF for you to, to look into. But now since we've gone through those, let's take a look. I'm looking on my computer right now, uh, but the annual dividend is $2.64 for SCHD. So what we need to do is we need to take that divided by your annual income. So you can fill this in with whatever amount of money you want to make, right? So let's say, I think the average said so the average was around fifty five to sixty k a year here in America. Just this is where our country I live. <clears throat> so, right now, let's take a look and say we want to make say we want to make fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay, passively. So this is SCHG every quarter is going to pay you out enough to make fifty thousand dollars. Right. So we're going to take that divided by the annual dividend, which is two dollars and sixty four cents. So we need. 18,939 shares of SCHD. So we take that number times the price of the ETF right now, SCHD, the U.S. Dividend Equity ETF, um, 7028. So let's go ahead and take that eight. Sorry, let's redo that math real quick. Um, so we've got 50,000. Sorry, I hit clear. So 50,000 divided by that $2.00 and 64 cents that gave us around 18,000 shares so then <clears throat> we times that number by that say 71 dollars so we would need 1.3 million dollars invested now guys that's not that bad i know that seems like a really big number um and it is but you know given the fact that you know personally i've only been investing for three or four years and i have fifty thousand dollars which fifty thousand is a far cry away from you know, 1.3 million. But if you, if you stay consistent, that's very, very doable. So is it is it a goal for you to retire early? SCHD has a really diversified group of stocks. They're all large caps. The payout ratio is 61% for this ETF. So they do have room to grow the dividend. The yield is about 3.7, 3.8%. So right now, guys, I mean, if you had 1.3 million and you tossed it into SCHD and wanted to retire off of that money, you could do that. You know, that's very doable. Um, are there better ways to do it? Yeah, if we look at a couple individual companies that have a higher yield than SCHD, higher than that, like 3. Point, you know, I think it's 3.7, percent you know, you could retire a little quicker. But 1.3 million is a decent amount of money. But... You know, if you're, you know, 16, 17 watching this video, you have a lot of time, you know, you have five, four or five decades of compounding 
You know, they tell me I'm not my generation. We're not going to retire till we're 65. So I'm 27 right now. So that's like 40 some 40 plus years that well around 40 years that I'm going to be investing or working essentially working to retire. So guys, you know, month by month you could figure out. Let's see, 1.3 million. So 1.3 go million. You know, divided. Let's say you did 500 bucks, 2,600 months. So that's 2,600 months divided by 12 with compounding. So that's 216. So that's not that's not too bad. So if you stay consistent, you know, and you let the compounding work its magic, retiring off of SCHD, you could absolutely do it. Is it going to take a while? Yep. But anything worth having is worth the grind to, you know, put that work in. So guys, I, I personally do individual stocks. So that's, this is not something I would do, but you know, take a look, see how this, I'll, I'll, I'll compare how SCHD, you know, matches up to a couple of the other popular ETFs like, um, VU, VTI, we could do like utilities, just different sectors and see how it compares. But guys, thank you so much for watching. If you if you want to, eventually you could retire off of SCHD. So thank you guys so much for watching. Now you know exactly what it takes, how much money you need, about $1.3 million invested to retire and get a quarterly payout that would cover your expenses at $50,000 a year. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the subscribe button on my channel, That Dividend Guy, and I'll see you guys in the next upload. Take care.